Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can change the color of lights inside of DaVinci Resolve 14 for video. So you can see here that we have a purple light that's emanating purple light onto the ground as well, but originally these lights were in fact green. So how do we do this? How do we actually make a light change its color to purple even in video form? Well, most of that takes place on the color tab. So with the clip I want to change, I'm going to shift over to the color tab here and just kind of reorganize everything so that it's on screen. And now the first thing we're going to want to do is create a selection, especially of this light that we want to change. So to do that, we should use a combination of power windows and qualifier selection tools. So for the clip I want to select from, I'm going to start at the first frame. I'm going to zoom in here and we're going to try to make a selection of that light. Now what you'll see is whenever we make a selection or add to that selection, it's going to be reflected over here in the corrector node as it receives the input and gives us an output. What that basically means is that whatever we have selected here is going to be the only areas which are actually affected by the changes we'll make to the color's hue. So you can see that that's not enough selection there for it to actually reflect in this light. So I'm going to choose the addition tool and I'm going to keep adding some colors to it basically selecting the color around the light source until we get a more reasonable selection of that area. Now you won't really be able to tell how good your selection is until you start shifting the hue, but what we can do now is to add in a power window. Uh, as you can see when we select the color, certain areas like the side end up being selected as well, and we can reduce that selection by adding in a circular power window. So I'm going to center this right on the light shrink it down both horizontally and vertically and by doing that it's going to restrict our total selection to the area around the light source. So now what we can do is go over to curves on this little tab over here and change the color using the red curve, the green curve, and the blue curve, uh, basically increasing or decreasing the level of those colors in the selected area until our hue shifts to what we're actually looking for. So let's say that this time we want to shift the color from the green over to blue. Well, obviously that's going to mean we want a lot of blue and a lot less red and a moderate amount less green. So I'm going to just take this curve here and shift the red way down. I'm also going to shift the green down, so rather than a teal kind of blue, it's more of an actual blue blue. And you can see that part of the light has now changed, but the selection isn't really that good. So we can increase the amount of colors that are being selected, and that's one way to get more of this area to be selected. Also, we can add in soft selection to either saturation, luminance, or hue, so that the areas that are close to this color, but not quite there, receive a little bit of the color change still, which is something we're going to do because that makes it look a lot better. Now we might left click there to add in a little bit of this lighter green out there, but I'm also going to increase the hard soft and the low soft so that it's selecting from a bigger range. We can just increase the range in general, but don't want to go too overboard with it. We might want more soft. We don't want the areas around the main light source to turn completely blue, because that would look ridiculous, but we do want it to show a little bit of the blue. So I'll also increase the high soft here, maybe the high total range. Um, that's looking a little bit better. Let's see if we can add a little bit more color to it without making it look too ridiculous. Uh, and if you run into a mistake, like right there, you can always hit Control Z to undo your most recent change. And that might actually be okay for right now. Um, obviously, when it comes to color, you can spend a lot longer playing around with it. However, um, now that the light has been changed in the light up there, it's not reflecting on the ground area like it was before as well. So to do that, we're going to need to add in a second power window. So I think we could use the linear power window pretty well here, so I'll go ahead and select that and move it down here where the light should be reflected. Now we can adjust the corners so the areas that are way off in the distance aren't really being affected here. And if you want to have a little bit of that same soft lighting, uh, you can take these red points and drag them further out. And when it comes to a street lamp, you're going to get a little bit of luminance on a lot of different areas, so I would actually recommend having some of that soft lighting. So over here in the right hand side and the very bottom, we have some white lighting coming from a different source, so I don't think we need that blue to hit all the way over here. 
So as it is in the first frame right now, that's not too bad. However, this is video, it's not Photoshop, so we need to make sure that these power windows move as the video moves so that we keep selecting the right areas. So to do that, I'm going to enable the Corrector 1 keyframe, which actually has a lot of different settings under it, um, for keyframe recording. So now whenever we make a change, like if I drag this point a little bit down there, it's going to take the current frame and add a keyframe there. So if we go now to the end of this clip, oh, well, we're going to shorten this clip a lot first. So let me see, where do I want the clip to end? Let's go back to the edit tab here. Uh, I think we could say right about here is good. So I'll make a cut there, and you would have probably made the cut a lot earlier, but I just forgot to do that. Okay, so we'll go to the end of this clip now, which is actually here, and you can see that the same light has now actually left the shot. So by this point, the power windows should pretty much be off screen, at least the circular one. But let's go here and set a keyframe. I'm going to drag this power window and put it over the light source once again. And as far as this linear power window goes, I want it to stretch over to the left a lot more, but not up there by the building, because that's a little too far for the light to reach to. Um, so let's see here. Maybe we actually decrease the soft lighting in the back there, because once again, we don't want it to affect the building. Uh, zoom out a bit, see if it looks right. I think this needs to stretch down further. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now we can see how it looks between the first frame and the second keyframe. And everything in between is kind of automatically calculated, which is super awesome for us. Okay, so I notice a bit of an issue there. Um, right here, there's some green here where it should probably be blue. So I'm going to drag this point down here. Now let's play that back again and see how it looks. Okay, okay. So I guess we'll go over here and set some more keyframes. And we'll probably do a hue shift at the end. Okay, so I'm actually going to expand this uh, selection area because since the light is a lot closer to the camera, um, it actually takes up a bigger portion of the screen. And we do want all of the light in it to turn blue, not just a little bit. Let's go back to the previous keyframe. You can also use the tracker tab over here and just hit left to go to the last keyframe precisely. I think here we also want the selection area to be a little bit bigger. And let's play it back one more time. Okay, so here I'm going to adjust this position because it's getting a little bit off center. Keep going. Okay, so I'll go back to the last frame here. And I actually want to take this corner and drag it in because the light is reaching too far now. So just a few more physical adjustments. So now I'll go to this final point in the clip here, adjust the position of that lighting one more time, and I think I will also expand it just a bit. Um, we'll correct the hue in a minute. And let's play it back. Oh, okay. Well, here the position's off again as well, so I'm going to adjust that. And this should probably be shrunk. So yeah, you just have to keep kind of going back and checking all of your positions on these windows, making sure that the selection is decent, and then play your video back. And it's looking pretty good so far. So, to get a little bit of this green lighting and shift it more towards blue, I think what we're going to do is increase high saturation here. So I'm going to increase both the high starting point and the amount of soft lighting there. We can probably go further than that even. Okay, that's not bad. And I think we want more luminance too. So I'm going to lower the low here. Okay, yep. That has a really big impact there. Uh, maybe not quite that much. I'll also increase the hue softness so that green areas are getting being selected a little bit more. Right, so we want to make sure that those greens do fall within this hue selection range. So I think that one more thing we could do if we wanted to would be to increase the size of the power window, the circular one up there on the light itself. Uh, we could also increase some of the soft lighting, but I think I'm actually going to call it good there because I don't want to overkill it. So just keep playing around with it until you think it looks good. That's pretty much going to be it for how you change a light's color inside of DaVinci Resolve. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I've been Chris, and I will see you guys in my future video content.